Hello and welcome to this podcast workshop being delivered on behalf of Cinemagic. My name's David Gordon. I'm a broadcaster and journalist. I've been in the media for around 20 years now. I'm currently published in papers like The Sunday Life, The Irish Daily Mail, The Irish Examiner and The Weekend Herald. I talk about travel on the radio around the world USA, Travel Radio Australia and locally on Downtown Radio where I also host a show four nights a week. My Travel Bites podcast was one of the first in Ireland. Uh, there's currently 107 episodes. It's been downloaded nearly half a million times. I've worked across the media spectrum and over that time I've produced and presented thousands of hours of audio. So what is a podcast first of all? A podcast is basically a media show, an audio show, which can be downloaded from the internet and played on a phone, on a PC, on a tablet, that sort of thing. Podcasts are produced by people called digital storytellers. They can be anybody who has a desire to document life experience, ideas or feelings through the use of story and digital media. Usually it's somebody with little experience in video or audio production. I want you to have a think about what podcasts you actually listen to, why you listen to them and how you listen to them, and also in your opinion what makes a good podcast. So have a think about those questions for a couple of minutes, hit pause on the video and restart when you're ready. So thanks for starting back up again. We already know there are thousands, if not millions of podcasts out there around the world. We also have lots of podcasts based here in Northern Ireland covering all sorts of topics. For example, on the slide, the Northern Ireland football team podcast, the Kingdom of the Giants for the ice hockey, Best of Belfast about tourism, Travel Bites, which of course is my own. Uh, there's business podcasts, there's entertainment podcasts, all sorts of topics are covered out there. What you want to do is stand out in a competitive space and business is finding that is a way of doing that at the moment because everybody has a blog but not everybody has a podcast. In the increasingly competitive world of online business finding those pockets of potential growth is huge. Podcasting is one of those pockets where your business can truly stand out. The number of podcasts are growing but there are still many many millions more blogs out there. So imagine reading a blog for I don't know 30 minutes it's hard to picture because it doesn't really happen. But with a podcast, people are spending time with you, binge listening to episodes while they're at the gym or maybe committing to work or school. Some of my favourite podcasts are those where I feel lucky to be a fly on the wall, listening in on a conversation. But I'm just lucky to be even be in the room in the first place. But that's one of the unique qualities of podcasts that's really hard to replicate. The feeling of being there, in the room, almost part of the conversation yourself. You don't get that with a blog post. I've gone to conferences and met listeners of my podcast who've never met in person, but they immediately start talking to me as if they've been friends with me for years. It's amazing and endearing at the same time. But that's the kind of scaling that a podcast can do on an intimate relationship building level. Another great perspective that will help you find your uniqueness is to start with the audience in mind. Now I know you don't have an audience yet, you haven't even got a podcast yet, but you probably know who'd be interested in your topic. Who are they? Imagine you had a chance to speak to a bunch of those people. Where would you find them? What would they be doing? Are they students? Maybe retired people or maybe musicians? Who are they? Imagine one person who fits the description above and, and give the person a name so you can refer to them easily. Let's say we'll call him John. What does John's typical day look like? If you were ever to meet John and get to see his life from close quarters, what would you see him do through the day? Who does he live with? How does he commute to work? Does he have pets? How do his mornings look? Now imagine you get to speak to John for some time. He's got comfortable with you. What's he thinking about? Is he thinking about work all the time? Is he struggling with productivity or balancing work and family? Is he always thinking about his Sunday golf lessons? Now that you have a good understanding of your audience and yourself, think about the best way you'd like to spend your time every week or every fortnight recording a podcast. What conversations or topics would you enjoy talking about? Would John enjoy listening to them? Rather, would John be patiently waiting for your episode every week? What I'd like you to do now is think about your podcast. What could it be about? Who could your audience be? So once again, hit pause in the video and restart when you're ready.
So welcome back and thanks once again for pressing play. The slides show some of the skills you can develop when you're producing a podcast. For example, media literacy, technology skills, interviewing skills, all types of different skills that you can develop yourself. So you've maybe considered now what your podcast is for. So why do you want to make that podcast? Are you a freelance journalist? Are you a business? Are you interested in music? You've identified podcasting as a great way of building authority, providing your customers and your audience with valuable and entertaining content. So who's your podcast for? Unless you know who you're making it for and why you're doing it, you've no chance of growing an audience. What you want to do is give them a reason to listen. So whether you're providing information that will help someone to lose weight, in my point of view, or doing a really entertaining interview with somebody, it's the entertainment value that's important. You have to give them a reason to listen and you have to give them a reason to come back for more. So it's important to look at this in the planning stages. The format you choose is really personal and depends on who's involved. If it's just you and you're not doing anything co-hosting with anybody, it's really simple. But you can have an average format then. You can let your listeners know what to expect. You don't have to stick to it all the time though. But you might be comfortable with that certain format and settle into the groove. Or you might prefer a mixed bag approach. It's really up to you when it's yourself doing it. So the solo show has the benefits that you don't have to rely on anybody else to record it. You can record it anytime, any place, anywhere, whatever suits you. You're building your reputation as the authority on your subject. And the podcast being yours means you don't have to uh, share any profits with anyone if you go down the monetization route. There's challenges to it as well though, because sometimes you get that feeling that you're talking to yourself and you realize that you're actually talking to a listener. So you have to remember you always have an audience. A co-hosted show is something a little bit different. It's a great way of getting around mic fright because sometimes just sitting there at the microphone with you, it's very hard actually to get going. But when you have something to bounce off, it's a lot easier. The challenges of that are that if you do go down the monetization route, you have to split the costs or split the profits, I should say, 50-50. Another option is an interview type show. You get to speak to one of your favorite authors or your favorite musician or favorite sports personality. But what you do have to do for that is prepare in advance. You can't just rock up and interview somebody. You have to have a bit of skill to do that in the first place. So how do you prepare for a podcast interview? If you're interviewing someone for your podcast, you need to take time beforehand to prepare because knowing a bit about your interviewee and having an idea of the questions you want to ask can stave off any sort of uncomfortable silences. Use the tips I'm going to give you and to get ready for an interview. So know who you're talking to and what you want to talk about. It's a good idea to visit their websites and do a bit of research beforehand. You don't have to be an expert on their subject matter, but you should be familiar with it. Have your questions written down so there's a bit of logic to them. So that logical um, progression is really important. Prepare twice the number of questions that you think you'll need, because then if your guest gives brief answers, you have a stockpile of questions to fall back on. And don't worry about asking a stupid question because chances are your audience has never heard it answered before anyway. Now it's all very well having the idea, the script and the potential audience, but how do you get that audio recorded? Well, you most likely have all you need to record a podcast sitting on the desk in front of you. A phone is a great way to start. If you're using an iPhone or an iPad, go to the App Store and download the Twisted Wave app. It's one of many audio recorders on there, but it's the one I use and it's really easy. To get started, all you have to do is press the plus sign and select 44,100 Hz stereo, 44100 HZ stereo. The red button starts the recording and basically away you go. You'll see as soon as you talk the levels on the audio records. So take a few minutes to practice recording audio. Hit pause in the video and press play again when you're ready. Welcome back again and hopefully you've had a chance now to look at Twisted Wave app and just to see what it's able to do. 
Talking into a microphone is probably the most difficult thing to conquer when learning how to podcast. You can make this difficult for yourself by imagining that you're either talking to yourself or talking to a microphone. Instead, focus on talking to a single person. Remember John? Ages ago, he's going to be the one listening. However, I suspect in recent times that you've all been uh, using FaceTime or Zooming and are all well used to talking to people using phones and computers. But practice recording in different atmospheres, being outside, in an echoey room, in a soundproof room. They all make your recording sound different. But it all depends, of course, how you want your audio to sound. Away from audio, you have to script your program. Once you're set up with a microphone and you're editing software, you're ready to hit record. But what are you going to say? That's where scripting comes in. When we talk about scripting, it's easy to imagine an in-depth essay that will be read out word for word, uh, becoming your podcast episode. That approach can work, but it's only for really highly produced, heavily edited shows. For a start, it takes ages to write, every time. So if you're working yourself, you'll never manage it every week. Unless you've practiced it a lot, like highly produced presenters have, it's really hard to avoid sounding like you're reading. And listening to someone reading out a script is really, really boring. Hope I haven't bored you too much so far. The intimate nature of podcasting is far more suited to being a conversation as opposed to being a sermon. So try to wean yourself off a fully scripted show with bullet points of everything you want to cover. This will become easier over time with practice until eventually writing a full script will seem totally unnecessary. Now, the rest of the session is over to you. Plan and record your podcast. Once your audio is saved, you can edit it on your phone and then upload the podcast to free services like SoundCloud to introduce it to the world. Podcasting is really easy and I really hope you do well with it. Thanks very much for watching and good luck. So in this section of the Cinemagic Podcast Workshop, we're going to look in a little bit more detail at the Twisted Wave uh, app uh, for the iPhone and iPad. There's also, uh, you'll find out very shortly, an online version as well. So what is Twisted Wave? Well, on your iPhone, your iPad, you can record or edit anything, anywhere. And it's just like having a portable home studio. If you don't have access to the phone like that or, an, or a tablet, you can also download it to an actual Mac computer. Or indeed, if you have a PC, uh, you can run it uh, without having to download or install anything on a PC. You launch it directly from your web browser and continue editing your files where you left them, which is uh, a very clever concept, I have to say. So uh, let's look a little bit more detail at what Twisted Wave actually does. Uh, you can undo and redo instantly. You can apply effects such as fade in or fade out. You can delay. There's compressors on there. Uh, you can use WAV files and MP3s in particular. You can import and export to iTunes. You can send your audio by email. You can upload it to an FTP account and you can also send it to places like SoundCloud if you're actually uploading direct from the app itself. Uh, and what the editor actually does, as I say, it turns your iPhone, uh, your iPod, your iPad into a portable recording so You can take it any place, anywhere, uh, just using the microphone that's on your phone or your tablet. So it's really quite clever and versatile as well when it comes to that. Some people might recommend something like GarageBand. GarageBand is good um, uh, in some respects, but it's quite limited into what it allows you to actually do, whereas Twisted Wave is limitless, basically, really just about the size of storage you have available on your uh, tablet or your phone. So Twisted Wave can accept audio files that are stereo or mono, as I say, WAV files or MP3s as well. You can also import it from various different places too, but even from email uh, or from iTunes as well. It's a very simple but useful layout as we're going to have a look at now. Um, we're basically just on the online version of this, but it's just the same on your phone or your iPad as well. Uh, it looks just identical to this. Um, so it is useful layout. The audio waveform consumes most of the available screen space in two variations. I'll just show you this now. If I hit record on this, uh, you will see uh, automatically that the, the levels come up here on the green bar. Uh, and also you can also see that the, uh, what I'm saying is coming up as uh, audio um, wave files as well uh, on, on the waveform. So you're able just to see what is happening there. The top smaller waveform up here in the, the pinky color gives you an overview of the entire recording you've made. In that case, I've made what 16 seconds of, of meanderings there. And uh, down underneath here, it gives you a bit more of a magnified view of what you're looking at uh, and where it then corresponds to in the, the overall package that you're making. 
uh, the visual volume indicator that we uh, had there on the green side uh, assists users analyzing the peaks and low levels in the recording as well and it's useful if you're recording audio within a live environment in the app because you'll be able to see as we talked about before uh, recording inside and outside and then the wind and then the quietness and that sort of thing so the, the various different ways that will um, affect your recording now on a, a phone or an iPad, which is really what this is designed for, it's all about touch on the screen because you can tap uh, your screen to move the play cursor from one location to uh, another. If you have it open on your phone or your uh, tablet, you can do that now. Uh, you can also pinch and zoom with your finger and thumb um, to expand or compress the waveform for accurate fine editing, uh, which is the same as doing this with your mouse. Um, and you can also then, if you want to, uh, delete different parts just by highlighting them with your finger, moving it across, and uh, you can then uh, just cut it uh, and do whatever you want to it, just like that, so it's gone. Um, the undo and redo function is very clever on this because all you have to do, if you, if you want to put that back in again, it's just one click, brings it there, or you can just take it out by doing that. So it's really clever the way that actually works as well. To move back and forward through the audio clip, you just simply swipe um, from left to right and that moves you through uh, with your fingers. You can easily add additional audio in, you can paste stuff in, uh, you can uh, to have a whole new recording and bring it and import it into the recording as well. You simply just put your cursor where you want it to be. And in this case, I'll just do this very quickly on this to show you. Uh, so you can copy there. Uh, I want to put it, put it in there, for example. So I will put it there and then hit paste and that new audio then transports over it. You can see it's the same audio there as well. So it just copies and pastes. And again, if I want to take that out, I just undo it and it's gone again. I just want to touch as well on music for podcasts because it's a bit of an issue sometimes uh, trying to find good music that you can actually use. So what I do want to suggest is something called Pixabay. Now, Pixabay is uh, a great website. It's actually free. And I'll tell you why it's a good thing in the first place. The reason is that uh, music is um, usually owned by somebody. Wouldn't it be great if you could Google your favorite song or make a clip to use as your podcast intro or outro or background music? Unfortunately, copyright laws and music licensing make it um, illegal to use music that you don't own. So the vast majority of music is subject to copyright. Artists want to protect their music and get paid when it's used, and, and rightly so. So it's illegal to use copyrighted music in your podcast full stop. Um, and if you do do it for a while, you might end up getting caught and you don't really want that either. So there's three different types of music you can look for. One is called Creative Commons music. And Creative Commons music allows artists to share their compositions with the world for free. And although Creative Commons licenses come in all varieties, they usually let you use a piece of music without getting permission as long as you give credit to the artist. Royalty free music uh, means you don't have to pay any royalties to the artist every time you use it. If you listen, listen to uh, music on the radio, the radio station has to play a blanket fee um, for all the music it plays so that um, part of that fee then goes back to the actual artist who sang it or, or wrote the song in the first place. Public domain music is something a little bit different. It's uh, basically copyright on a song eventually expires. And when it does, the track enters what's called public domain, where you can use it however you see fit. A lot of older music, like classics and old children's songs, fall into that sort of public domain. One uh, site I do recommend is called Pixabay, up on the screen here. Um, Pixabay, uh, as you can see, there's, there's photos in there, illustrations, uh, videos, but it's also got music. Um, and it has thousands of tracks on there. Uh, for free commercial and non-commercial use. Uh, all different types, of, if you look down here, the type of, of music it is um, and the different um, styles and genres, that sort of thing. So it's worth having a look around just to see the different types of um, music that they have available in there because it might have something there that suits you. So once you get your music sorted out, you can then of course change, move that into an MP3 file and, and put that into part as part of your podcast as well. Um, when you're ready to uh, finish your podcast and when it's uploaded, the, the best thing to do is use something like SoundCloud. Uh, SoundCloud gives you half an hour to um, of, of audio use, uh, if you like. Uh, so you can have a, a podcast of up to half an hour long and then use the link you have on SoundCloud uh, to uh, use that on Facebook or Twitter or, or Instagram, wherever it happens to be, to tell people to listen to your podcast. And that's really the quickest way to do it. It's basically as, as easy as going signing in, creating an account for free, and uploading your music as a, a WAV file or MP3, and that's really it done. And, the, and then the world is your oyster after that. So do take time to, to play around with Twisted Wave. 
on your phone, your iPad, your computer, wherever it happens to be, just to get used to it. And of course, at recording in the, in the different scenarios as well. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.